Hello and welcome to video one for week eight. In this video, I'm going to review the basic ideas of conics, and then I'm going to go over some different ways of describing conics that will be useful later in the week. So very briefly, we have four standard types of conics. Circle has one parameter, which is radius, has a centered form, and then I can shift that to wherever I want in the plane. The ellipse is determined by the length of two axes. Uh, show up in the denominators of its equation. I can shift that equation to the, anywhere on the plane as well. I'm not going over these in too great of a detail. I just want to remind you what the general types are. The parabola, um, x squared equals some constant times y. This I'm going to spend a little bit more time on. There's a distance between a focus and a directrix. I want to make sure you understand what those are. So a focus is a point, a directrix is a line, and there's some distance between them. And the parabola is all points that are equidistant to the line and to the point. The distance to the focus and the distance to the directrix are the same. And that gives us this equation, which I can move around as I wish. Hyperbola is also dependent on some axes. These are slightly different from the axes of the ellipse in terms of their interpretation, but they show up also in the denominators. And I can shift this around. Right, those were the standard descriptions of conics that we used before in previous courses. I want to go back to that little diagram I drew about the parabola and understand it better. So here I have my focus F, here I have my directrix L, and gamma is going to be my conic, my parabola. So the distance from the point on the conic to the focus is going to be R, the distance from the point on the conic to the directrix is going to be L, and the distance between the focus and the directrix is going to be D. So to describe a parabola, it's described the fact that described by the fact that R and L are the same. So in each of these points, distance R, distance L are the same. No matter which point I draw on the parabola, the distance to the focus R, the distance to the directrix L are going to be the same. I can break this r up into its coordinates if I defined the angle to the, in this case, let's call this the positive x-axis, and those will be useful in what I'm going to do shortly, which is why I've drawn them on this diagram. All right, so what I want to do is I want to take this description of the parabola as distance to a focus and distance to directrix, and I want to adjust it in the parabola, the distances have to be the same. I'm going to find a, define a new quantity called eccentricity, and I'll write it as, as E, and it's going to be the ratio of those two distances, and I'm now going to let that be different from 1. So R and L have to be the same, so for the parabola, R over L equal, is equal to 1, but I'm going to allow for R over L to be some other positive number, E. And that's going to give me different shapes. Um, if E is small that means radius is going to be that means the r term is going to be less than l that means that the path is going to be closer to the focus if e is large then l has to be or then r has to be larger than l that means that the path is going to be closer to the directrix and since this sort of changes as i swoop around i'm going to get a bunch of different shapes out of this now the setup i want here is i want to imagine that the focus is the origin and I've chosen r and theta for that reason because I want them to be polar coordinates. So to describe this point in polar coordinates, I can give r and I can give theta. And everything else here can be determ determined in terms of r and theta, this distance d and this number e. So d and e are going to be my fundamental constants. d is the distance between my focus and directrix. e is my eccentricity. R and theta are going to be my variables in polar coordinates. L can be determined by if I know R cos theta and I know D, then L can be determined as the difference of D minus R cos theta. So L is determined. So all my information is determined by two constants and the two parameters of polar coordinates. And if I do some trigonometry, which I'm not going to do here, I can actually solve for r in terms of my other parameters, and that gives me this expression. So that the shape that I get by choosing a certain distance d between the focus and the directrix 
and a certain eccentricity e is described in polar coordinates by this equation or in polar coordinates by this parametric curve, where theta is the parameter and r is given in terms of the parameters. You can think of this either as a parametric curve or as a locus. And this is going to give me an extension of the parabola into other shapes. So if e equals 1, this is a polar description of the parabola. Turns out that if e equals 0, I get a circle. And this is sort of a, a, a bit of a limit case since as the eccentricity goes to 0, the shape actually gets smaller and smaller. But in the limit, it's getting closer and closer to a circle. An ellipse has eccentricity between 0 and 1. A parabola has eccentricity exactly 1, which is where we started. And a hyperbola has eccentricity larger than 1. And this is lovely because if I go back, this entire polar locus gives me all of the conics all at once, except for perhaps the circle as the limit case, because as e goes to 0, the radius also goes to 0. But otherwise, this gives me all of the conics at once, and the difference between the conics is just the choice of the eccentricity. And we're going to use this to define um, orbits. We want orbits to be conical in shape. And the difference between these orbits, the ellipse is a fixed orbit, and these only go by once and then sort of go away. So what's that about? Well, you can think of that as sort of an escape velocity. The eccentricity is going to refer to the shape of this orbit, and it's going to depend on initial conditions like velocity. So we're going to have orbits where the object gets captured, and it keeps going around and around in an ellipse. And we have orbits where the object is moving fast enough that it moves past in a parabolic shape and then goes away forever, or a hyper hyperbolic shape. And this is, this is an orbit where the energy is small enough that it gets captured. This is an orbit where the energy is large enough that it escapes. Um, in the next video, we're going to be talking about Kepler's law. We'll talk specifically about elliptic orbits, things that uh, have low enough energy to be captured. But these other shapes come from the fact that a, an orbiting object can have high enough energy that it could just swing around its central object and be flung away and never ever come back if it has sufficient escape velocity.